Hey y'all, 1776 Duck here. Welcome back to the channel. You'll notice we're not in North Carolina anymore. We are in Nevada, Texas at the Military History Museum. Fantastic place. You ought to check it out. If you've been following um, a lot of the alchemy stuff that I've been posting on my Instagram, you'll notice that we've been driving World War II Jeeps. We've been driving Humvees. It's been a pretty uh, interesting experience for sure, and you will definitely see more from this area uh, on the Alchemy page, but for the 1776 Duck page, today's a really special day. Now, if you follow Alchemy Custom Weaponry, of course, you know by now I am uh, over sales, marketing, customer service, uh, basically uh, everything but a town crier, and hell, I probably might even be that. And uh, you'll know that we are releasing a new pistol today. And it's one that's so important that I absolutely had to make a personal video to talk with you about it uh, a little bit more. So without further ado, we're going to get right into the new Alchemy Resto Mod for uh, quarter two, or it's just a second uh, 2024 Resto Mod for Alchemy. And that is the Classic Government. Classic Government, it is a gun that I've been chasing, this idea I've been chasing in a 1911 for a very, very long time. We're going to show you it is safe. No magazines in. It's going to been chasing for a very long time. And, you know, I've always felt this urge, this drive for a pre-war gun. Uh, that, that's an era of, of 1911 history between World War I and World War II that really speaks to me. It's always has. You know, we, we, we kind of make fun of myself. You know, I always say things are gangster. Uh, because that, in my opinion, is the epitome of firearms, is that, you know, gangster era between the uh, World War I and World War II, the, between the World Wars. And this gun is something that I've been looking for for a long time. I've always wanted a gun that aesthetically resembled a pre-war gun, but obviously had a lot of the modern things that make shooting <laughs> modern 1911s a lot better and a lot more fun. So this is the classic government's a gun that we we took a lot of inspiration from if you're familiar with the channel um, and if not we'll link that video uh, ahead but i had a 1919 colt government model built by nighthawk to the specs um, that i wanted and it was a gun that i thought a lot about it was a gun that i had built when i graduated college and i thought a lot about what i wanted out of that gun now with that gun there was a few things that i wanted to keep original like the hammer uh, the grip safety um, the thumb safety, these things uh, that really made those guns iconic. But what I found and what I have found by shooting pre-war guns is if you want to run that gun a lot, it is uh, sometimes less than advantageous to have some of those pre-war uh, you know, accessories uh, such as the tang grip safety, the GI um, sort of frame, the small nub thumb safety, the large spur hammer, especially since we live in a time when you don't, have, you don't carry your gun with the hammer down. Now, getting into this gun, we took the style of a pre-war gun, and I'll flash up some pictures so that y'all can see this. We took the style of a pre-war gun, we did new, the pre-war roll marks, this is actually pre-24, pre-1924, so this is a pre-A1 gun, but post-World War I gun. And so, uh, just like my 1919, we took a lot of inspiration from that. So we have the similar markings there, of course. By now, you're familiar with Alchemy doing the no scallops on the frame. And we did a long trigger. It is just a really fantastic piece. Obviously, we have this vintage classic finish, um, which is gorgeous, very similar to that smoke nitride. But honestly, in my opinion, this looks better. It's, it looks more like worn bluing than even smoke nitride does. And especially with the prep work that we put on these pistols, it's really, really interesting to see how this gun turned out. And in fact, it's probably one of my favorite finishes I've seen uh, on a 1911. You'll notice back here, this is kind of the Harrison uh, Tribute Center here. Uh, if you're not familiar, John Harrison, famous 1911 gunsmith, now makes fantastic 1911 parts. So we have the Harrison Retro Rear Sight. That's a fantastic thing. If you're looking for a rear sight that looks old but is new, that's the way to go. We got the Harrison Spur Hammer, which of course is bobbed to work with a modern grip safety. Uh, it kind of gives you the same feel, but of course you can use it with a gr modern grip safety. I've bled all over guns before shooting pre-war guns, and uh, you know, it's I, I like to think it's a flex, and it is, but sometimes I just, sometimes this is just a little bit better to do. And then of course we have the Harrison um, Retro Thumb Safety, which gives you a little bit more paddle. Um, it's a little bit more along the line of a post-World War II Colt uh, thumb safety, but uh, it still has that kind of reminiscence of a uh, early nub thumb safety, so very nice. And then we have the flat uh, mainspring housing here with the lanyard loop. Of course, the magazines 
on these guns wouldn't have landry loops, so no no need to worry about that. Did get front strap checkering. That was one thing that I kind of went back and forth on that original gun I spec from Nighthawk uh, on my original Colt. I obviously had my name engraved there, and that's super gangster, but I've learned that I really like checkering, and checkering is great. And checkering is a fantastic invention for 1911, so uh, I definitely am really happy we kept the checkering. We actually thought about going no checkering on this gun, but I kind of thought, I, I really want to carry this gun, so let's let's do checkering. Um, and then, of course, you know, let's go back to the roll marks here. These roll marks, of course, were pulled straight off the 1919 that I have, so it has the roll marks where it's all one roll. Uh, they changed this during World War I so they could just quickly roll the guns instead of having the pony behind the serrations here. They wanted to be able to quickly roll the guns, get all the information on the gun in one roll, and that way they can make the guns faster. So we actually did go for... Um, that 1919 style of uh, markings and of course <laughs> honestly my favorite marking on the gun says acw automatic caliber 45 caliber spelled the way they would have spelled it back then and it's just a fantastic piece i mean it's it's when i tell y'all this might be one of my favorite guns i've ever seen it's no joke when this gun was sent to me for photography i straight up called my boss nick and i said I'm keeping this gun. I'm buying it. As soon as we get done with show season, and in fact, I really haven't waited that long. I've, I've been running the hell out of this gun. And you'll see almost every video uh, from here on out with Alchemy. If I've got this rig on, this is the gun that I've got in the rig because I'm obsessed with it. When I shot it, I just, I almost, I, we actually didn't get enough shots of another gun because I burned up all the 45 shooting this gun. And I, uh, that, that's not fantastic work-wise, but it was fantastic for me because I'm just obsessed with this gun. The lockup is amazing. The hand fit uh, parts are amazing. We've done a good job. And I'll tell you something else. The, this finish, we do a good job beveling our guns to be proper combat guns. But this finish, the way we tumble it, really even rounds off the gun more. So, you know, that old adage about a combat gun, sights you can see, the trigger you can pull, and no sharp edges. This gun really doesn't have any sharp edges. It makes for a really fantastic carry gun. Of course, the grips we have on it now are American Holly. Uh, as many of you know, smooth grips aren't my favorite, so pro probably when we get done with uh, NRA show and I actually buy this gun for real, for real, which it will happen. I, there's no, it, this gun is coming home with me and staying with me until I die. And so I will probably put some high figure or wood caliber, full checkered walnut stocks on this just to be able to have a little bit more um, texture there, especially since we just have the serrated rear on the mainspring housing. So, man, you know, it's one of those things where I've just fallen in love with this gun. It is a gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous pistol. It is probably, I, I mean, as you know, a lot of people know me, they know the Combat Limited is a gun that I've just obsessed over for a long, long time, and I do love the Combat Limited, but boys and girls, I'm going to tell you something, I think this is going to be my new, my new carry gun. You know, I, I really, really, really like this gun. It looks amazing in the Milt Sparks rig, so... You know, it looks really good with decorative stitch. Uh, this is, of course, the decorative stitch uh, Milt Sparks belt. Um, obviously, they don't have decorative stitch uh, mag pouches, but this is the single mag pouches they have. And then, of course, the famous 1AT, the best holster ever made, in my opinion. Um, the 1AT here with the decorative stitch in this gun, chef's kiss, you know. So I love the way this looks. I love the way it feels. Um, I'm, I'm kind of bummed that I'm going to have to put it in the case during NRA. I'd rather just carry it all all NRA, but this is a fantastic rig, fantastic gun. Honestly, it's a gun that I'm kind of emotional about because it is a gun I've been searching for, searching for, searching for. I've spent a lot of money on Colts to try to make them into this. Anyways, with that, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining me to go over the classic carry. Before you go, make sure if you're in the market for an old Colt, because you're like me, you like old Colts, check out guns.com. You will probably find old Colts. Actually, I know for a fact you'll find old Colts. And use code 1776DUCK, no spaces, no, I guess all caps would be the way to do it. And that will save you $50 on your old Colt. And then you can send that off and have something built with that special. But in the meantime, thanks so much. Have a great day.